good evening. Welcome back to Little Red Rose. Time to talk about football with Coach Pete Rosamondo. Hi, everybody. Harold Mann with you. As the Cardinals do have that one game behind them. Uh, Coach, uh, welcome, in, welcome in a very tough opponent. Eighth team, eighth ranked team in the country yeah. uh, this past Thursday against Idaho. Uh, looking back on that game, just uh, some of your thoughts. Uh, I mean, good football team, obviously, with uh, a lot of experience uh, being in the playoffs and a lot of experience coming back on offensive side of the ball and picked up some new guys on defense and really came out and did did a few different things than we expected on defense. So, um, you know, all credit obviously goes to them. They did a great job. And we came out, played a little timid, I thought. And, uh, you know, I didn't think we attacked as much as we should have. And, um, I don't think they ran by us or anything along those lines. They just did a really good job executing, and we didn't. So um, we had to play some catch up down the stretch. Our guys played hard the whole time, and wound up putting a couple scores in late, and uh, you know made it a little bit interesting. I want to talk about the crowd. Uh, you, you had the whiteout, and uh, you had the, uh, the students out there. We had the freshman run, which I liked before the game. <laughs> All the freshmen running goal line to goal line. Uh, the student body, the fans, uh, just the atmosphere when you're coming out of that locker room running coming down the hill prior to kickoff and you know, going between the band what was what's what was that experience like i mean it was incredible i, I never expected to experience that in our first game there and they, it was the fans were incredible our students are amazing our band obviously is is top notch maybe one of the best in the mm-hmm. region really impressed with them so and, and you know we're we're coming along and you know we'll, we'll catch up to those guys but we want we want to encourage our fans to keep coming and we're going to keep improving and give them a great product to keep coming out after and cheering for now you guys have practiced in it uh, all summer long all fall camp uh, did you see the weather wearing down on Idaho at all. I noticed they had some cramping late in the ball game. Uh, but about how did your team, uh, do you think, hold up to the extreme hot conditions? Good. I think we did really well. I don't think we had any any cramping issues. Um, guys did a good job of preparing, hydrating beforehand. Uh, you know, we, we talked to them all week about hydrating and making sure that they don't just do it the day before, that it's a weekly thing. And uh, guys did a great job, obviously, because we didn't have any cramps. And, you know, if we could have got Idaho in the fourth quarter, I think that would have been our advantage, you know. Do you want to compliment uh, your, your training? Trainers, your strength and conditioning, and all those involved to help condition those guys. Yeah, I mean, Pat Walker, our strength and conditioning coach, is amazing, did a great job and getting our guys prepared for fall camp, but also every day he's working with those guys in the weight room and on the field. And he's like my consigliere, you know, he's with yeah. me all the time. He's um, He gives me a, a lot of insight on the guys and the team and where we are and what, we th- what he thinks we need to do. And I got a lot of faith in him, and obviously he's – He's a guy that's transformational for us. Talk about the player quarterback of Robert Coleman, 119 yards passing. He had a touchdown pass. Unfortunately, uh, I think he did. He did have one pick, but uh, overall, I thought he progressed and showed uh, more better on him in maturity, whatever play by play. I thought when he got laid in that ball game, he looked a lot better. He did. I thought early on, uh, I don't think he was shell-shocked at all. I thought he, he handled the situation great. I thought he prepared well. Um, you know, we didn't do a great job protecting him the first couple drives, and that, I think, hurt some of his uh, his accuracy and, and some of the things we were doing, so we needed to do a better job there. But overall, I thought he handled the, the lights really well. I thought he handled the situation really good and continued to battle. You know, the one interception was forced. I don't think he needed to throw that ball. I think he could have easily checked down to the, to the tight end coming across the middle, but, you know, he made the decision to go after it, and, um, you know, unfortunately, Unfortunately, it turned out as an interception, first drive of the second half. I asked you this Monday during your weekly press conference, his confidence level, and he said that you know, he's he's fine. Yeah, I don't ever worry about that. Or yeah. or, you know, sometimes his confidence is too high. But, um, no, I think he's grounded. I think he understands what he needs to do to get better. I think he took hard coaching this week, which is not always easy for the quarterback, and especially when you were in a battle all year. But he did it and, and came back and, and really had a good week of practice so far. I mean, tomorrow will be – you know, obviously the the cherry on top, but he needs to he needs to have a good week. We are visiting with Coach Pete Rosamondo We're at the Colorado Shopping Center. Little Woodrow's out here each Wednesday night during the duration of the football season, talking the more football. Back on News Talk 560 KLVI. 
Harold Mitt along with Coach Pete Rossamundo at Little Wood Woods. I want to thank all the fans for coming out here tonight, supporting Lamar Athletics and Lamar Football. In the uh, Cardinals uh, dropping that first one, uh, 42 to 17, the eighth ranked Idaho uh, team that were battling for a national championship this year. Hopefully, uh, a year or two down the line, Lamar will be in that position. We hope. Um, I tell you, I mean, for those watching on the uh, video part, uh, that will be uh, put up online uh, on Lamar ne Network either later tonight or tomorrow. I'm touching the white helmet. I love these white helmets, and that's what you wore on Thursday. White helmet, state of Texas with the LU Interlock logo on it, white face mask. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, they're a pretty cool helmet. I think uh, our equipment guy, Miles Lloyd, did a great job of designing it and uh, came out awesome. Our players and, and fans are really excited to see it out there and uh, something new you know bring a little something new to the uh to the equipment cake so let's that, talk let's talk about your defense real quick uh, of course they had their work cut out for him when you got someone like hayden hatton a preseason all-american receiver two touchdown receptions a touchdown pass uh overall you know how, how would you say your defense uh, played on thursday well i thought we were in the right spots and i thought we we were executing very, very at a high level, but we just didn't fire our weapons. You know, like we had chances to make plays and we just kind of waited just to not make sure we didn't make a mistake. And I think that cost us in the long run, especially in the red zone. We just didn't, we didn't fire our gun and go get those guys. And, you know, wound up costing us on some big plays. And I think big plays were really, that was, when you look at the tail of the tape, Big play was the reason why that they, they ran away with it. It wasn't – I mean, obviously, we, yeah. we were plus in the turnovers. We did a great job of that. I thought we did a good job with penalties, you know, keeping those to a minimum. So, I think big plays is obviously uh, – and we did well on third down, yeah. you know, and they and they really didn't. So, I think the tail of the tape was, was definitely big plays. They had eight and we had one. Yeah, they, they, you look at the total yard of one of them. You mentioned big play, 93-yard touchdown run. Uh, and yeah. I'm from a, probably an All-American running back. When you talk about a team discipline, I know you're big on discipline. First game, five penalties, 35 yards. And, uh, I mean, in a coach's mind, that's five penalties too many. But, I mean, only 35-yard penalty and for a first game. I thought that, I think that's a pretty good number. I think we're getting there. You know, I think we're, you know, we're moving in the right direction. I think, we, you know, the fact that we, the only two Turnover we had was a was an interception, which was an aggressive play, not a silly play. And you know, I think if you can keep the, your turnovers to aggressive plays, I think you have a chance to be successful. And and that's what we just got to keep building on as as a football team. I like the depth that you receiver coming in. We knew about uh, 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 Savon and Kingdom, but uh, you, you showed three or four more guys that could really step it up for you. We did. You know, Jordan Wallace, uh, you know, Ju Junior College transfer who got to camp a little bit late. Um, because of some uh, some eligibility issues we had to get through. Not that uh, there was a problem. We just had to get transcripts and stuff in. But as he started to come along, man, we were like, wow, we got to get this guy up a little bit. And uh, you know, he made some plays in the game. Trey Hall, mm -hmm. you know, guy from transfer from New Mexico. Uh, Great kid, worked really, really hard. I don't think he ever thought he would have that opportunity. And, you know, Savon gets dinged up in the first half, and he's got an opportunity to get out there and play. And, I mean, how much fun is that for that guy? He scored yeah. a touchdown in his first game as a Cardinal. And it's just fun to watch a guy that has worked really, really hard, you know, reap kind of some of that hard work and in, in, in some success. I've had a chance to talk to coaches and other sports, previous coaches, about this, but not you really on air. The transfer portal. You, your thoughts on the transfer transfer portal? Well, I mean, I, I think it's good. I think it's good. if it's there, it's good to help your team build fast and get get uh, older faster. But um, you know, I think guys go in the transfer portal for a variety of different reasons. They got to do a great job of researching why they're in the transfer portal and you know what they're exactly looking for in the next opportunity. I think that's really important. And I think the guys that we have, I know the guys that we have, have really fit in well with the team and the guys. That that we had on campus originally and the coaching staff. So I think our coaches did a great job of, of going out and getting guys that fit what we're looking to do here at Lamar. We see this more on the Power 5 uh, level and, uh, and even uh, uh, in the mid-majors. You don't see it that much in FCS, but it's out there. Your thoughts on NIL, especially when you're talking the Power 5s, uh, uh, the type of money they can throw at some of these kids. 
yeah, I, you know, uh, it's not meant to do that. You know, that's not why they did it. You know, they did it so that student athletes can use their name, image, and likeness to go out and 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 really work and make money. And I think that they. Uh, you know, they, they put it at, out there without any restrictions and any governance, and now they're they're trying to close Pandora's box, and I just, I don't think they're able to do it. But, you know, I think the kids, the, the kids, the, the young men have a chance to make money good for them. Yeah, I agree. You know, good for them, let them use their name, image, and likeness. They're out there, they're out there working their tails off to get that name, image, and likeness. In some cases, it's not, you know, it's probably not uh, warranted, for a freshman or someone who hasn't played yet, but hey, you got you got to use what you have, you know. And 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 they're doing that right now, and they got the option to do that. And I think some of that landscape is changing, but you know, it's changing every day because it's so new. But I I do think it's a good thing for the student athletes. I think it's great for them actually. We're talking to more University football coach Pete Rossamundo. We're at Little Wood Rose in the Colonnade Shopping Center on Feeling Boulevard. Come on by and see us. We're here until 8 o'clock tonight, and we're here each and every Wednesday night from 7 to 8. We're back at Little Wood Rose at News Talk 560 KLVR. We are back out of Little Woodrow's. Harold Moran along with Coach Pete Ross on Monday talking to Mark University Football, our weekly coaches show. Thanks for the folks here at Little Woodrow's for hosting. Uh, awesome. Thanks for all the fans for coming out uh, last week and again this week. Hope Jay to see you out here as well if you're around the neighborhood. Come on, you still have plenty of time to get here. Enjoy the final 30 minutes uh, of this show. Okay, coming up on Saturday, Coach, uh, road trip uh, for your team heading up to Monroe, Louisiana, taking on Louisiana Monroe, your FBS opponent of the year, a uh, team that uh, took on the Army, Army, the Cadets of Army, this past Saturday in Monroe and beat them 17-13. Uh, what do you see from the Warhawks? Uh, play great defense. I think they uh, they fly around on defense. They do a great job of getting to the ball. They turn uh, Army over five times, which. I don't think that's happened in probably eight, eight or nine years. And uh, they just they play a great brand of football on defense. On the offensive side of the ball, they're a spread team that plays fast tempo. And they, they played two quarterbacks in the last game. And I think they settled on the kid that played in the second half of the game, who's, you know, I think he's a threat to run and he's a threat to throw. And they're going to use that space to put us out in, uh, in some, some precarious position. So we got to do a really good job of hemming them in. They got a great kicker. Guy kicks the ball deep into the end zone. We're not going to probably have much luck on returns the way this guy kicks unless we get a win going. But, um, yeah, they do a good job on special teams. So they're, they're a complete ball club right now. They've only played one game, but based on what I see, they they did a really good job of, of shoring up some weak spots from a year ago. Looking at them rushing-wise, uh, Hunter Smith was a leading rusher against Army, 103 yards rushing, but 62 came on uh, one carry for a touchdown run, and at the 62, shows he does have breakaway speed. He does, yeah. He can put it in the end zone for sure. And that's what you worry about with spread teams is, you know, they give you get a crease and they just hit it, and all of a sudden they wind up in the end zone. So we got to do a good job of filling our gap, be real disciplined in where we play, and make sure we force everything to the edges so that our speed can rally to the ball. Do they use a multiple receiver formation? Uh, do they target anybody in particular that you can tell, or do they spread it out pretty much? No, they spread it out pretty good. I think they, they try to do a good job of spreading it out and making sure they get it around to all their, their guys that can really play. But all their receivers kind of look alike. They're really athletic. They're, you know, they're kind of quick twitch guys that when they get the ball in their hand, they can, they can certainly put it in the end zone. So we got to wrap up and tackle a thing that I don't think we did a great job of last week. You got to make a big improvement on that this week. Defensively, they held Army to 279 yards. What are they going to show uh, the Cardinals defensively? What are you going to be looking at? I mean, they're three down front, multiple. They're, they they do play some four down, but uh, you know they play their defense. They're not. They move a lot up front because they're not huge, but they are athletic and they put themselves in good position by doing that. And they make you earn every yard. They're not going to play a bunch of man and and just let you pick them and throw the ball down the field. They're going to they're gonna make you drive the ball, and they're going to make you hold it and put it in the, in the end zone on a 10-play drive. That's just kind of what they've been. I mean, each team has their own philosophy, your own offense. You really 
uh, go with what you work with, but it is a situation. The best way to keep uh, their offense off the field is you uh, possessing the ball, having good time of possession. Matter of fact, looking back uh, Saturday, or excuse me, last Thursday, there was what, like a 30 second differential in uh, possession time between the two teams. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't put a lot of stock in time of possession. You know, I think mm -hmm. meaningful possessions are more important than time of possessions. And, you know, we didn't do a good enough job last week of having early meaningful possessions where we can move the sticks and keep our defense off the field. So we got to do that better this week, and I think we will. We, we've, we've honed in on a couple things that we like to do, and, and I think we're going to stick with that and, uh, and make sure that we can continue to build on that each week. Let's uh, do some X's and O's, some coaching here. You talked about um, kicking into the end zone. Um, when I was growing up, it was uh, taught that uh, stand on the 10-yard line for a punt. If it's to you or in front of you, call for the fair catch. If it's over your head, let it go in the end zone. That's not necessarily the case anymore because of the accuracy of some of these punters. Yeah, we, 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 we use the adage... If your if your five yard line's really your your your, your demarcation, uh, I think that's where you're going to catch it. Anything outside the five, anything inside the five, you know, you're going to try to divert away from the ball and get those guys to follow you, and hopefully the ball goes in the end zone. Well, you got a spectacular kick returner, and Dimash Harris. Uh, yeah, is he giving the green light up to him? Uh, because he had a hundred yarder last year for a kickoff return uh, in a Cardinal game. Do you pretty much? Uh, Tell the, you know, what do they look for, whether or not they can bring it out or go ahead and let it go in the end zone for you to get it at the 25? I mean, there are, there's some coaching to it. Obviously, you want to give him, a, you know, put his heels at the two. And if he's, you know, he starts backing up, he probably should, you know, just let the ball go in the end zone. If he can catch it going forward, he probably should catch it and go. I think that's, uh, that's we trust Dimaje. He's been doing it for, you know, a couple of years yeah. now. He's He's got a pretty good feel for what he's doing back there. So. You know, and he also uh, backs up Kaden at running back. And well, if you got a number two, that's a good guy to have. Yeah, so where's number two? Where's number two? Yeah, he was number two. <laughs> but uh, just talking about the play of Kaden and then having Dimaje, Dimaje as a backup. Yeah, I mean, Kaden's been, he's, he, he had a great game last week. He played, played to win. Really impressed with him. Love his fire. Love the way he's playing right now. We just got to continue to build on that for him. Um, you know, Dimaje is a, a one. He's a one B. You know, I mean, yeah. he's he's a big, strong back that when he gets in the open field, he can put it in the end zone. I mean, he's fast. And then uh, you know, we got Major Bowden will be back this week, and so will RJ uh, yeah. both, Carver. Both those guys will be back this week. And uh, could we see all four of them? I think there's a chance in situations you're going to see those guys. I think, uh, you know, RJ's a heck of a short yardage goal line back. I think that uh, so is Dimaje. But I think that, uh, you know, the Rashad Johnson, our freshman, is, is off the IR this week too. So, you know, he's got a chance to maybe sneak in there too. He's he's, he's pretty spectacular as well. Talk about uh, a player like uh – uh, major, I mean, just, uh, I mean, he, he comes from a state championship in high school at a kickoff return last year against McNeese State for a touchdown. Uh, just so many ways you can use him. Yeah, he's, he's a Swiss Army knife. He can play slot. He can play running back. He can return kicks. Um, he, there's really not much any of our running backs can't do, but especially him because he can go out and play receiver. Yeah. You know, he's the son of a coach. Correct. Uh, shows up every week when he's preparing for games. I think that's uh, – he's a heck of a leader for our offense. We missed him last week. We missed that spark that he could have given us on third down and things like that. So, it would be good to have him back in the lineup this week. You like doing that as a coach? I mean, he comes out of China Spring High School, mentioned uh, – Son of the head coach, wins the state championship. He's a quarterback in high school, but you know he's not going to play quarterback in all likelihood in college. Do you see that when you're recruiting kids and you see him, hey, uh, he's a quarterback, he's a defensive back in, in high school, but hey, he could be a slot receiver for us in, at the collegiate level. Yeah, I mean, Anthony White, who's a freshman corner for us, was really a receiver in high school, and he's six one and a half. He's long. He's got he's got really good speed, and he's come in as a corner and has done a phenomenal job. Yeah. You know, he just has unbelievable feet, he, and he has a knack knack for playing football. So, 
I think those two things together, we'll, we'll, you'll see, and you don't see a lot of six one corner. No, you don't. Not at this level. So I think Anthony's done a great job, but I think that's the same way with Major. You know, you see a guy that can operate, you see a guy that can run an offense, you see a guy that's a leader, and you just want him in your program. And I think that's where, where they, when they recruited Major, that's what they saw, and and he's he's not disappointed at all. So a lot of kids on the sideline and had someone ask me this, and of course, you know, they're guys that, uh, you know, are red-shirted the players not suited out. Is there a lot of number you're allowed to suit out, or you just uh, I just do that, uh, you know, uh, it's determine a, how many... It's a locker room thing, you yeah. know, it's, it's getting dressed in a locker room with 110 guys. It's, yeah. It's not comfortable on game day, you know, and the guys that aren't playing sometimes are, you know, they're they're not as dialed into the game plan as those other guys. So right. I think I think that becomes a little bit of a just not that they're trying to be. Our guys are great. They do they did a great job on the sideline on on Thursday night. But you know sometimes you're just not dialed in like the other guys, and you don't want distractions. Um, just uh, talk about a little bit on uh, red shirts. Would any of those guys maybe suit up later on because they are allowed to play in what four games? Yeah, I, do. I think obviously homecoming we'll try to dress as many guys that are healthy as we can. I think we'll do the same thing for probably the Lincoln game. Um, you know, it just it just all depends really on the room, space. You know, space is the most important part. Cardinals again coming off uh, that game against Idaho on a Thursday night. Uh, early on in the season because of the Southeast Texas Heat, uh, your, your home games uh, kick off at uh, 6. Then when we move into the month of October, I believe we go to 3. What's your preference uh, when it comes out? I've heard some coaches say, hey, let's kick off at 11 in the morning. I'd like to play at noon, but my my, 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 boss, my boss doesn't want to do that. Uh, he's he's not a, uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I can keep off at noon and uh, get out of there. Not get out of there, but I think, you know, one of the benefits of playing at, at Lamar is you get – you get used to the heat in Southeast Texas. Yeah. You get used to understanding how your body works and hydration. And I want to use that to our advantage any way we can. And, you know, if we can get a team in here and now all they're talking about is how hot it is, man, that's, that's an advantage for us because we already know how hot it is. Now, I'm sure you've visited uh, maybe a quick visit with the uh, coaches of Idaho after the game. Did they talk about that or before the game? Or usually the head coaches get together at the midfield, have a conversation. Did uh, they talk about the heat in Southeast Texas at all before the game? No, but you get little indicators. Uh, obviously, they brought in six big fans <laughs> uh, misting, which you're not really supposed to have missed in the humidity, but they yeah, didn't know that. I think they learned that <laughs> when they had guys cramping anyway, but they came out in pregame with long sleeve shirts and, and sweatpants, and I just said, nah, it's probably not that smart. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know it's, it's good to be tough. And, and and think about but it, for but some reason, they had to wear their uh, home jerseys or dark jerseys. Yeah, right. So I, I just think... Uh, yeah, I mean, no, I mean, Coach Eck and I talked before the game. He didn't say much about it. I don't think he wanted to wanted to put too much light on it. But, um, you know, after the game, he did say, yeah, man, it gets human hot down here. I said, it sure does. Okay, someone's just jumping aboard again, talking to Pete Rossamond, the Lamar University football coach. Uh, and I'll hit on this again. I may even hit that a little bit later on near the tail end of the show because I'm excited about it, uh, the, the fans, the home fans. Uh, uh, out there, and uh, they seem pumped up, and then that, that's what it was about getting excitement and bottom line getting butts in the seats and I, and I think you're, you have that going in the right direction. Yeah, I hope so. You know, we love our fans and we want to give them the best experience they can have. Obviously, it starts with a great game day crew and, yeah. you know, Seth uh, and his crew do a great job with facilities and, uh, you know, it just makes everything work so, so great on game day. Um, and, and it's good for our fans. They, they love that type of environment and and, you know the food was good. The, you know they had they had plenty of, of uh, libations to enjoy uh, with Coors Light and Blue Moon and all kinds of good stuff and Miller Light. So yeah, but the funny thing, walking into the stadium, hey, come here! I can't have one before the game. After the game, everybody's already left. You know what's up? <laughs> Amen. Well, let's do it anyway. All right, uh, gonna get our next break. And again, we are at Little Woodrose talking Lamar University football. Come join us with uh, Pete Russell. I'm Harold Mann on uh, News Talk 560 KLEI. 
We are back out of Little Woodruff, Harold and Man, along with Pete Rosamondo, talking Lamar University football here till the uh, top of the hour. Again, he's out here each and every Wednesday uh, between the hours of uh, 7 and 8. Again, the Cardinals heading to Louisiana Monroe on uh, Saturday. You ever been to Monroe, Louisiana? I have. Have you really? Yeah, we, uh, we recruited uh, one of our nose guards. Uh, He's from uh, Minden, which is right out that way, and we were stopped. And, and obviously, our defensive line coach played there, and he's from there, so uh, we've been up that way. Okay, going to touch on Idaho one more time because we're talking about Moscow, Idaho. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where the University of Idaho is located. You've actually been there. I have. Yeah, I was there my uh, senior year in college. We played a second round playoff game there. And you played for? Boston University. Boston, yeah. How did that turn out in Moscow? Uh, we lost 21 14, and they had Doug Neusmeyer, who wound up playing in the NFL mm-hmm. for the Saints for a long time. Right. Uh, he won, the, I think he was a Jerry Rice winner or something along those lines. He, he was pretty phenomenal. So. In the final week, we go up to South Dakota, but I still went and uh, talk about uh, the trip uh, to Monroe. It's between uh, now, here on this Wednesday night, up until the bus pulls out of the parking lot, uh, what takes place? Uh, well, we got we to gotta practice tomorrow morning. We need to really do a great job. We, uh, last Thursday's practice was not our best. So, you know, just as you're building a program and, and trying to turn things around, there are a lot of things you have to really work on. And, you know, one of those things is learning how to practice well. And I, I think, you know, a lot of times when you're in a program that hasn't been to the top of the mountain, you worry too much about getting to the game day rather than worrying about Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practice. And um, that's the process we're in right now. And I think we've had a good Tuesday. We've had a better Wednesday. And I think we have to have a great Thursday in order to go in there and compete with those guys uh, on Saturday. But, you know, the, the building process has been fun so far. It's not, you know, obviously we didn't have the success we wanted in the first game. But, um, you know, we're here to win, you know. And, you know, when Coach uh, O'Malley and, and – Jaime Taylor hired me. They said it would be worth it. They didn't say it would be easy. Well, yeah, and, and, uh, and, and it's, it's so. going to happen. I mean, and we just have for the community and the fans to be patient because, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, they got to learn your system, your coach's system, our staff system, and everything about it. But, but I'm confident that it's going to happen here at Lamar University. It will. And I think that, uh, you know, we talk about patience with a sense of urgency, you know, and I think that's, uh, that's kind of where our fans need to be. You know, have some patience, but, you know, know that it's coming, and we want it as fast as they do. And, you know, it's a process, and we have to get through it. And I, I, I said this on, on Monday at the press conference. We have a lot of winners in that locker room. Right. They're winning people. They're winning human beings. They want to do the right things. They just don't know where to go yet. So they're, we're continuing to work on it every day. And with our, our strength and conditioning staff, our training staff, our equipment staff, and our football staff, we're going to get there. Uh, faster, sooner than later, I would say. Uh, we just have to continue to be patient and continue to work on those little things like having great Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practice. You know, they say that, that you know, practice preparation is game reality, and that's kind of where we are in the process. You know, we have to understand that. Now, the extra two days of this week because you actually played – on a Thursday, does that help you get ready for losing on own? You got an extra two days to uh, work on things. Well, they didn't play till Saturday, so it didn't. It, the only thing it gave us was an opportunity to flush the film from the week before a little earlier, give our guys an extra day to work out, give our guys a, a, a little time off on Friday and sen- and Sunday. So it was good for our guys to refresh their bodies and get ready to roll. Let's talk about a week of practice during the season. Uh, one day full pads, two day full pads. Uh, just how, how does it usually work for you? Uh, right now, we are practicing in full pads for two days and, and half pads for one day, and then no, nothing on the other days. Okay, so Thursday or tomorrow will be tomorrow will be half pads, and then uh, what do you do on Friday? We're just a walk through on Friday. And then Friday morning, do a walk through, then get on the bus. Now, when you get to Monroe, do you go, do you go to the stadium beforehand, or do you not hit that stadium until you pull the buses up on Saturday evening? No. I won't. I won't do that. We don't need to be there. We'll we'll, we'll head there on Saturday. We're just gonna get to the hotel. We're gonna have some dinner. Get some uh, have some some family bonding and you know be around each other for for which is I love being on the road. I think being on the road for 
uh, a young football team is is to me it's it's just a great bonding experience it's you against the world and mm-hmm. you know that's the way I feel going in there and I love it and I love being the underdog and I can't wait to go play this game on Saturday and see what our guys have improved on this week you know what's crazy is and not really crazy it's just uh, how it works and so many times when a college football team hits the road they don't actually stay in the city they're playing it. Are you staying in Monroe? Uh, just outside. But, yeah, we're right. We're, we're only about 20 minutes from the stadium. Not bad. All right. Going to get our final break in. Again, Harold Mann with you out at Little Woodrow's with Coach Pete Rosamondo. We're talking Lamar University football on News Talk 560 KLVR. News Talk 560 KLVI, Harold Mann, uh, along with Coach uh, Pete Rosamondo out here at uh, Little Woodrow's talking Lamar University football. Cardinals uh, getting set for their second game of the year after opening up against eighth-ranked Idaho this past Thursday night. Coming up on Saturday, a trip to Louisiana Monroe. Again, uh, about 10 minutes to go on the show. Let's uh, recap uh, some of what we talked about early on in case someone just now jumping aboard. Let's uh, recap again a little bit uh, Thursday night on uh, who you thought uh, stepped up a little bit uh, and uh, uh, impressed you for the cards. Uh, great to see, like I said, Trey Hall played well at receiver for us. Um, you know, Andre Dennis played well at receiver for us. A Westbrook guy, local. Mm-hmm. It's great to see that. Um, you know, I thought Eli Ripley on the offensive line played extremely well. Um, obviously, Robert, you know, has his ups and downs, but I think overall, I think he you know, he, he, he did okay, hung in there. I think, you know, Kalen Griffin on offense played played lights out. You know, he had a couple mistakes, but I think for the most part played really hard and he gave us a chance to win the game. Uh, you know, on defense, you know, Sammy Scaife was incredible. I thought he played like his hair was on fire, and, you know, it's great to watch him play that way. And, you know, I, I hope he continues to grow and play that way uh, this year. Talk about the play of your offensive line uh, this past Thursday night. Uh, they were looking at a cross of a big defensive front. Yeah, I don't think we play great, to be honest with you. As an O-line guy, you know, I look at that room and I want those guys to play really, really well. And, you know, not to make an excuse because no excuse is to be made, but, we, you know, we started four new starters up front. The only, the only returner really was, was to Sherry, and he played inside at left guard rather than left tackle. So, um we really just, you know, we, we, we just weren't in sync. We didn't play together well. I think, uh, you know, we're working really hard to get that uh, that group to play together. And, and a lot of it had to do with injuries throughout camp. You know, we just didn't get the guys to play as a unit long enough. And I, th- I will always believe that it's time that makes those guys great. And, um, you know, we just we got to continue to get better there because that's where it's all won. Speaking of injuries during camp, uh, how healthy are you going in on the Saturday? I think we're pretty healthy. You know, I don't. I think there's a couple of, uh, you know, Saban Ray's day to day right now. We don't know that he'll make it to the game. I didn't list him as a starter because I just don't know right now. Um, he's improving every day. Got a lower body injury. Um, other than that, we're in great shape. We got two guys back off the IR and, and, uh, and Major Bowden and, and Rashad Johnson on the, in the backfield. So I think we're, you know, we're getting healthy. Reggie Burke's offensive lineman from Louisiana, actually, um, off the IR this week. So he practiced. And so those guys are starting to really come around and, and look good. And defensively, we got out pretty healthy. We do have some uh, Louisiana kids, and we have some East Texas kids. That's really uh, not that far away, jump in a car and drive across yeah. to Monroe. And I don't know if you experienced it uh, when you were playing, but how special is that for a kid to go, basically go home and play in front of family and friends? Yeah, good. I mean, I think guys love that. You know, they get an opportunity. You know, sometimes it, it'll, it'll tighten them up and they yeah. won't play well, you know, because they'll be thinking about everything except playing. And, uh, but, you know, we got a ton of East Texas guys that, yeah. are, that are what I would call impact players for us. And uh, it'll be fun for those guys to go back and play there. Yeah, because uh, the family and friends are just maybe a two-hour car trip, uh, jump across the state line and head 
on over to Monroe. Maybe stop at Shreveport, pull a couple of, uh, you know, one-armed bandits. Yeah, hey, <laughs> but, um, I'll, I'll talk to Dixon about that. Maybe on the way back we can get a couple slot machines. Yeah. But that, that happens when we play with East State. Uh, your defensive front, uh, talk about them a little bit and how they held up on uh, Thursday. You know, I thought, you know, we played Peyton Christian a lot, yeah. the freshman out of, out of Kilgore High School in East Texas. and. You know, he at, at times played like a freshman, but I think he showed his explosiveness and his ability to be a playmaker for us. And can't wait to watch his growth over the next, you know, 12 weeks here. I just fired up. I love the kid. I think he plays with incredible passion, um, loves the game of football, comes to work every day with a smile on his face. And, you know, you just don't get enough of those guys, really. You know, you love being around them. And I just love to see him, Jamin Jackson, I think did, had a few impact plays. Um, you know, I think we got to play better up front on the D line. We got to play better pad level. Play a little bit more sudden. I think we practiced that way this week. So hopefully it carries over on game day. And the reason I'm bringing up the defensive front, I know you looked at this, but uh, we're going to be looking across at a pretty big offensive line: three twelve, three o three, three fourteen, three thirty five, three twenty four. That's uh, pretty big across that offensive front from Monroe. Yeah, I know a few of those guys. I actually recruited a couple of them at Charlotte um, when I was there. Um, yeah, they're big. You know, they're big. There's, I don't think there's many teams we're going to play that aren't big. So the team we played last week was big. So, you know, we just got to go out and play our game. We can't worry about that. that right? It's in the books. That's yeah. written. So we can't, can't change that. So And then you, you talk about this to your, your uh, weight uh, room. Uh, uh, you're going to get there. You're going to get these kids. Uh, there. I mean, a lot of your guys, and, and this is what some of our fans uh, got to kind of understand, a lot of your players right now were playing high school football a year ago. Well, I mean, we got enough veterans. I don't, I don't use that as an excuse. I just, for us, it's just operating on game day in our environment. You know, like we, you try to create that game day environment in practice, but it's just not the same. You know, there's not the same pressure. The fans aren't in the stands. It's, it's just different. And our, you know, our guys just. They needed that opportunity to play together in, 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 you know, in the heat of the battle, you know, and that's where we were on Friday night. And we, and to be honest with you, we didn't handle it well. You know, we we froze a little bit early. You know, we had a chance to get off the field that first drive on third down, and you know, we let the kid, the big receiver, push us around, and you know, we come back on the on you know two drives later, and we same exact play, same exact situation. Cody Martin doesn't allow him to do it and makes great play on the ball. So, you know, we just we, we have to be confident in what we're doing, be confident that we're ready to make plays when the game starts. You seem uh, obviously real confident about our football team at the Cardinals. This week of practice, how's it went after the first week loss? It's good, you know. I mean, our, our guys have they've done a good job. They 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 they've been here before and they know how to battle out of it. But you know, we have to be much more intentional at practice about what we're working on. You know, I think you know that a good friend of mine had an expression. He says, "When you see a little, you see uh, you see a little, you see a lot. You see a lot, you see nothing." So if you're not focused on that little thing that you need to get better at. You know, you see all this stuff that needs to get improved and, and you just lose focus on what we really need to work on. So I think as our guys understand, get to understand me in this environment, they need to work on those things. They need to improve on a daily basis and make sure they're intentional about it at practice. That's what we need to get better at. Still right now, we need to get better at that. Talk about nutrition. Uh, uh, with these guys, uh, you, you, you kind of watch what they eat a little bit. Now when they're away, you know, from the uh, field and field house, you don't know, but do you kind of watch what they eat a little bit? We, yeah, I mean, we feed them a lot, so we get a chance to, to pick what they're eating and how they're eating. And we have uh, we have a registered dietitian on staff for, for the football team, which a lot of teams in our conference don't have. So, like I said on Monday, we, we have a championship administration, and they've given us all the resources to be great, and, you know, we're, we're starting to move on that right now, but it, Annette has been a great addition to our staff, and she's doing an unbelievable job of making sure our players know what to eat, when to eat it, and how. Two minutes to go in the show. Just talk about what's taking place from the time we shut this equipment down until you jump on that bus uh, Friday afternoon. Practice Thursday and walk through Friday morning, and then we're on the bus and ready to go for business. And then uh, once you get to Monroe, uh, just uh, what will Friday night be like for you? 
Uh, we'll have some meetings. We'll have some walkthroughs. We'll have some recovery stuff with our strength staff, and and uh, really, really just looking at brotherhood. You know, getting together, watching Friday night football, and you know, eating snacks and hanging out and playing cards and you know, doing all kinds of fun stuff together. We don't kick off till seven o'clock in Monroe on uh, Saturday night, so that's a full day in Monroe. Uh, how do you break that day down? Well, we're gonna let them sleep in a little bit, and then we'll get up in the morning and eat breakfast and do some walkthroughs and some meetings and just get our guys' bloods pumping a little bit and send them back to their room with lunch and bring them back for pregame meal and, and then get on the bus and go. So Get to the stadium about, what, two hours or what, an hour and a half? What do you like? Uh, no, no, we were there about two hours and 25, 30 minutes before. All right, well, uh, Coach, again, uh, thanks for stopping by. I want to thank everybody who came out tonight. Uh, again, uh, back home in a couple of weeks, uh, about three weeks, actually, because uh, this Saturday we are in uh, Monroe, then we go to South Dakota. Then we come back home for a game against Lincoln, and we're really excited about getting back to Provo Humphrey Stadium. Yeah, pack that house, fans. We, we love to have you there, and we want to make sure we give you a great experience. All right, Coach, thank you, and we'll see you Saturday in Monroe, Louisiana. Thanks, sir. Uh, okay, Pete Wasamondo again to the Mark Cardinals and uh, Louisiana Monroe Warhawks right here on KLVI. We're on there at 6.30 from Monroe. Kickoff at 7. Hope to see you there. If not, get right back out here next Wednesday night at 7 for the Coach Pete Wasamondo Show. Thank you everyone for coming out tonight. From East Talk 560, I'm Harold Mann. Good night, everyone.